Hello everyone, welcome to another video by me. Today we're going to be doing something different. Today we're going to be setting up a leaderboard using a quiver. This is how I set one up recently for Dwarven. I'm going to show you the step-by-step -step process just so you know how to do it yourselves and show you how easy it is to add it to your own games. So the very first thing you want to do is sign up for Quiver. So once you come to the page, you're going to sign up and create an account. And once you have an account created, we're going to hit new project and we're going to create the project. And I'm going to name mine test tutorial project and I'm going to create this. You can name it whatever your game's name is if you want to keep track. And we're going to create a leaderboard. For this leaderboard, I'm going to call it main. And there are different ways we can keep track of scores. So we have the all scores, which keeps track of every player's submitted score. Every time they add a score, a new score will be put on the leaderboard by them. There is their best score. So whenever they submit a score, it will overwrite their previous score. Their latest score, which will just submit whatever their most recent score is. And a cumulative score, which will be the total combination of all their scores added together for this tutorial for this tutorial we're going to use best score so we're just going to select it here and we want higher scores are better now if you're doing something like a speed run you'd choose lower scores but we're going to use higher score for the moment and we're going to hit create leaderboard now once we have this set up and created we will have a token here which we'll use once we go into godot alongside a leaderboard id which we will also use once we go into godot so the next step is we're going to open up the project and if you don't have a project already we're going to create a new project Once you open up Godot, the first thing we want to do is go to the asset library and we're going to search up Quiver and we're going to download the Quiver leaderboards and also the Quiver player accounts Once they're both installed, we're going to go to the project settings and we're going to go to the plugins and enable both of them. And once they're enabled, we go down to the very bottom of the general tab and we go to quiver and in general, it will look for the authentication token. And to get the authentication token, it's back on the website. Opening the website, you get this line here. It will be different for you and you copy it. Make sure no one else knows about this line and you paste it back into Godot. Now that's quiver set up. And what we're going to do now is we want a global script. And the reason we want a global script is because we want to keep track of our score and player name. Now, this is more so if you're making your own game, you want to have them held in a global of some sort so you can call back to them at any point. You might have it structured a little differently, but this is just an example. Now we want to make this global script in auto load, so we'll go to project settings, auto load, and we're just going to look for the file and we're just going to double click that and we're going to add that and make sure it's enabled. Once we have everything set up, we're going to create the menu. So for this example, I'm going to create a control node, which will be the leaderboard scene. And for this scene, we're going to add a line edit to input a name. We're going to add a button to implement score to the player. And we're also going to use a button to submit that score. And we'll have an external button to show the leaderboard and another button to hide the leaderboard. Once we have this scene set up, we're going to instantiate specifically the leaderboard UI. And once we have that added, it requires a leaderboard ID, which if looking back, we go onto the web page again. And right here, we have the leaderboard ID. So we copy that and we paste it back into Godot. Now, once that's added, we'll also add a button to our UI, and this will be a button to close the UI. We're going to hide that UI, and we're going to add a script to our leaderboard scene. Now we're going to connect the signals between all our buttons and our line edit to the script, and we want to be able to interact with our line edit so what we will do is we'll click it hold control and drag it into the scene we're also going to save this scene 
for our line edit, we have the player name being updated when we submit it, that updating the global player name, and then we're just going to print the name just to keep track. When our score button is pressed, we're going to increase the score by 50. This can be however you want in your own game. You can manage this yourself. So if you have a timer, you can make it where the score is increased by a timer. But in this one here, we're just going to increase it in increments of 50. And then we're going to set that as the score. And we're going to print the score as well so we can keep track of it. Now, this is the most important part. We're going to await the leaderboards, post guest score, and we need the leaderboard ID. So we're going to copy from the website again, and we're going to paste it, and we're going to put it in quotations. Then we want to get the score and the player name. We're also going to reload the scene so that we can update the leaderboard. Usually you'd have a different scene for your leaderboard or something along those lines. So that would update it itself, but just for this example here. And now when we press the leaderboard button, it will show the UI for us. And once this is all done, it should update. And when we press the hide button, it will also hide that UI for us too. This here is all the lines of code you need to get a functional leaderboard on a basic level. We're going to run this scene and I'm going to input a name here. And I'm going to press enter. As you can see down below, it says OSIP. We're going to increment the score by 50. And we're going to hit submit. That will reload the scene. And when you open up the leaderboard, there you can see OSIP rank 1 score is 50. Now, if we use the same name, submit that again, increment the score by two more and hit submit, it will reload. And if we check the leaderboard, my score is increased to 150, but it doesn't duplicate my name. Now, if we close this and we open it up again. So if we put a different name in, such as such as R for an example, and we increment the score to, let's say, 200 and we hit submit, it will reload and we'll open up the leaderboard to see the new player has been submitted. Now this works on all platforms and I'll show you an example of it working in my own game Dwarven. And while watching the video, you can go down below and join the Discord if you want to stay up to date on the projects I'm working on, such as Dwarvane and its release to mobile platforms. If you'd like to, make sure to like and subscribe to keep up to date on future content coming to the channel. And you can go to my itch page if you're looking for Dwarvane or any other projects that I'm working on at the moment. Anyways, back to the video. Within Dwarvane, the first time you enter the house, you have to input your name. So as you can see here, I input Aw as my name. And once I'm in the cave, I go and mine a few gems and that increases my score. And when I die to one of these enemies, inevitably, that will lead me back to the hub. Back on the main screen, I have a button to open up the leaderboard. And as you can see at the bottom, there I am, tracked on the scoreboard. Now, any returning players, their names aren't showing because they forgot to input their name. But any new players will be forced to input their name. And that's everything for this video. I hope you all enjoyed and thank you very much for watching. And I really hope it helps you for your future endeavors. And if you want any more content off me, make sure to like and subscribe. And comment down below if there's anything else you would like me to go over. Either way, I'll see you in the next one.